it means a lot, but it it's gonna it's gonna feel way better when I get to go against Joshua Pasio and uh, unify that world championship and, and take that away from him uh, twice in Manila. Man, that means a lot coming from my jiu-jitsu coach, Alex Hody. Uh, you know, we've worked day in, day out on our jiu-jitsu game. Uh, and my coach, James Lee and Brian Harper, you know, I've, I've had a, a great staff here this whole camp. So to get a black belt tonight means means the most, especially coming from Alex. And, he, you know, he's a very humble man, but I do think that he's probably one of the best grapplers in the world right now. So, um, yeah, it just it, it meant the the world to me it's right up there man i've been doing jiu-jitsu for almost my whole life i mean i think i started when i was like nine so this is uh an accumulation of time you know and and i think i would have maybe had my black belt if i would have stayed at my original gym in indiana but uh you know i moved a lot mixed martial artists have to move a lot and and i'm glad that alex had that understanding and was just like yo, this guy deserves his black belt. But it was a super big surprise. Was not expecting it. And uh, yeah, Alex is, is literally probably one of the best uh, practitioners and the best coaches in Michigan. Yeah, Gustavo is, uh, you know, smaller. I went against Bokar Masignane. I kind of finished him in a similar fashion. So I knew that the, the body triangle was going to be there and, and that we would find that. But at the same time, I mean, his clinch game is really, really good. But besides that, I think that I was uh, better than him across the board in every other aspect of mixed martial arts. He did put me on my back for the first time in my whole career. So props to him for that. Uh, I was trying to just keep him keep him there and try to get him tired because I knew he was going to get tired uh, within that second to third round. But uh yeah, I'm thankful for actually going on my back for once and and having to rely on my jujitsu and my uh, other practicing skills. I was listening to a little bit of everybody uh, in, in the match, but you know, uh, James and and Alex, they they really took it over. And you know, Harper, he's he's probably one of those guys that that keeps quiet, but he's you know he's very vocal when when the time comes. And I was hearing a little bit of everything. And, and uh, I remember Alex, when I had that body triangle, he was telling me to stay tight uh, chest to back and as, as tight as I could. And I think that that really helped me uh, gain that rear. You know, um, people hate me because I, I constantly say that I'm better than Joshua Pasiao, but I am better than Joshua Pasiao at the end of the day. And I know that He's he's gonna be waiting and trying to get better and and trying to understand me and trying to trying to get his wrestling better or trying to get his his whole self better and I know that he just had a ACL tear I don't know how big a, the ACL tear was but I'm super excited to go against Joshua Pasiao again he's a he's a great Christian a great person and a great fighter and if I can go back to his home country and I love Manila I love the Philippines all those people are huge fans of mixed martial arts so. Going over there and um, being around that fan base, around that energy again, that would mean the world to me. But do I think that I would finish Joshua Pasiao this time? 100%. I'm sorry that that, that happened this past fight. Uh, you know, and, and the people that say that I did that on purpose, it's like, oh, okay, you don't know how much money I just lost. You have no idea how much, you know, the belt meant to me and how much you know that meant to my family so um let's run that back in in a in a good way good fashion uh but at the same time um you know he he's second on my list but i do i do want to bury his name i'm tired of hearing the same name it's almost been three years of hearing joshua pasiao i'm glad that i got to go against gustavo Bellard this past time so thank you one championship for that but uh yeah Josh, he's uh, he's second on the list compared to Demetrius Johnson. Yeah, Demetrius Johnson was, you know, somebody that I was watching on TV at Buffalo Wild Wings, winning a world title in 2012, you know, thinking that, hey, that that could be me one day. And, and luckily, I believed in myself enough to where I ended up getting into the UFC and I was that close to where I, I was going to fight him. But 
now I, I think that that God gives me signs and, you know, getting into one championship and getting at the accolades where I am now and where Demetrius is now. And now we have kind of like almost like a common opponent uh, between Gustavo. I think that it, it would be a great matchup between me and him. Reese McLaren, he's boring. All these other guys in, in flyweight, they're they're pretty boring. Uh, Kyra, he ruined his chance by doing steroids, by cheating. So I'm not a cheater. I'm somebody that goes and tries to go up and beat competition. I climb the mountains, and I'm not worried. And, and I know that goats are really good at climbing mountains too, but I'm not afraid to try to, to chase a goat. 100%. I think that everybody's just going to keep on sleeping on me until I put him to sleep. So uh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I went against Pasiao, and I beat Pasiao on the feet. Uh, I went against a Cuban Olympian. I beat an Olympian on the ground. So, uh, and I took him down twice in his own game, which is Greco-Roman. So I show people that I'm willing to take all, and uh, I'm not I'm not worried about anybody else in the division. So if they want to give me Kieto Yamakita for another interim belt, or if they want to give me Sanzar, which Sanzar, he's only had you know, really one fight outside of the the top 10. So um, I think that, that Yamakita would be a good fight for me. But uh, Sansar, hey, I'm not worried about you either, bro. Uh, you can beat all of these guys that are just coming up. But when you hit that top five, we'll see how just good you are. It's a, it's a privilege to be a father to my daughter. She is the most amazing thing in the world. I can't uh, really even explain it. I wake up in the morning and the first thing that I see is just a big goofy smile and you know you can't help not to you know you might you might have struggles in camp you might have struggles in life but when you see that everything just disappears and you just see that that big shitty grin and it's the it's the best thing man and and it really has changed me as a person and it's changed me as an athlete as well and my hunger and my drive towards this sport yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting me throughout these past two years and, and especially this past year when all hell broke loose and, you know, I had people saying that I was a cheater, people saying I was I was a, a bad athlete, that I, I, I'm not a good uh, a good fighter and stuff like that. I appreciate everybody that actually hung with me and understood where I stood as a mixed martial artist. And uh, I want to thank all the people back home, too, in the United States that went and tuned in. I, you know, I, I try to stay away from my phone as much as possible, a uh, day away from fights. But holy crap, there was a lot of people tuning in to, to watch me and Gustavo's fight from, uh, from my hometown to Michigan to all around the United States for the people that know me. So, uh, yeah, it, it means a lot. And thank you guys so much. And and. I'm 31 years old, man. This is just the start. I'm I'm coming in, and like I said, I'm looking for goat meat. And I think that Demetrius Johnson, he if if he wants to fight me, and I know it's completely up to him and completely up to Shawtree in one championship. But I feel like that's that's the money fight, and that's the the way to go. But Joshua Pasiao, if he's still on the back end, then he he ends up getting better, and his uh his knee feels better, and his neck feels better than. Let's run it back in Manila. We can run it back in the United States. We can, uh, you know, November 8th, maybe somebody will back out and, you know, something something big will happen there. 